The Lake of Geneva is a world away from the horrors of Syria. But this is the city where chemical weapons were first outlawed almost a century ago. And now it's where the two key foreign ministers, John Kerry of the United States and Sergei Lavrov of Russia, have come to see if they can finally break two years of deadlock and work together over Syria. On their way to talks, they signalled a new spirit of cooperation to strip President Assad of chemical weapons, but couldn't hide the old tensions which still divide them. We proceed from the assumption that the resolution of this problem makes any strike against Syria unnecessary. And I'm sure our American partners too, as President Obama said, are firmly in favor of a peaceful settlement of the problem of Syria's chemical weapons. It has to be real. It has to be comprehensive. It has to be verifiable. It has to be credible. It has to be timely and implemented in a timely fashion. And finally, there ought to be consequences if it doesn't take place. On Russian television this afternoon, President Assad was seen apparently buckling under Russian and American pressure, apparently committing to give up his chemical weapons, crediting Russia, chiding America. When we see that the U.S. wants stability in our region and stops threatening us and preparing for a strike and also stops supplying terrorists with weapons, then we'll be able to finalize all the necessary processes and they'll be acceptable from a Syrian point of view. If President Assad does comply, what is the plan? Syria has now told the United Nations it will join the treaty banning chemical weapons and disclose its stockpiles. Then, chemical weapons experts would visit Syria to verify, secure and destroy the weapons. But Western nations want clear deadlines and an ultimatum. Russia is resisting this, arguing that Syria should be allowed to collaborate and should not be coerced. But with new pictures every day of terrible violence, huge practical as well as political problems remain. Can weapons experts be protected in a country torn apart by war? Still, President Putin sees this as his moment, reaching out to Americans. If we can avoid force against Syria, he said in the New York Times, this will improve the atmosphere in international affairs. My working and personal relationship with President Obama is marked by growing trust. Uh, the situation in Syria and how we can uh, make sure that... President uh, Obama himself is under pressure and relying on real progress. I am hopeful. Russia and the United States will be talking late into the night, possibly into the weekend. The stakes for both are high. Success over chemical weapons could open the way to wider peace talks, but failure would be an added disaster for political reputations and, above all, for the people of Syria.